It's iPhone time, baby! Are you excited? Everyone's excited, right? I love iPhones! I, I buy everyone! It's not the same thing again, I swear. They've actually changed things. Look! The notch! It got bigger! Everyone wanted to get rid of it and instead they were like, you know what, let's move it down. It's okay, I'm not gonna let that hamper my excitement. Just, I'm trying to elegantly open the box. It's not really working. There we go. <laughs> Whoopsies! Ooh, look at that. Is that a D-Brand skin? They're definitely sponsoring this video. <laughs> Is this a different phone, David? Did we get the wrong one? No. It looks pretty similar. <laughs> There's iPhone 13 Pro Max, iPhone 14 Pro, and iPhone 14. All right, as with pretty much every iPhone, you're gonna find your phone in the top, a charging cable, and no power brick. <laughs> I wish they would bring that back or at least give us an option, but uh, no, no power brick. The cable is still gonna be the same USB-C to lightning cable. For some reason, these phones still use lightning. <laughs> Come on, Apple. You're supposed to be a trendsetter, but I guess it's not as fun to set trends when everybody else has already done it. And then inside you got your typical propaganda. We do have a SIM tool still because we're in Canada. A lot of the controversy around these new phones is that in the US there's no SIM card slot. So we still, we still got the SIM cards. We'll talk more about that in a bit. No complaints there. Do you want a sticker? Oh, look at that sticker. I'm gonna debrand this debrand. See? Ooh, look at that. It's not crooked, what are you talking about? Mm. Oh no, oh my god. You can see the camera and sensor array, like, so obviously. The actual, like, dynamic island thing that they're, that they're doing on this phone, where they made the notch bigger and made a fancy word to make an excuse for it. Um, it's mostly display, but it's not nearly as black as the actual sensor array and the cameras there. That looks kinda bad, not gonna lie. <laughs> Now I'm sure you'd get used to it. If you look at it head on, looks totally fine, right? That's a bit nitpicky, I will say, but um, a little weird, honestly. It feels a little less polished than usual Apple. On the outside, these phones are sharing the same aesthetic that uh, a lot of people have said is inspired from the iPhone 4. I have no idea why they would say that, um, but it's basically the same as the iPhone 13. On the non-pro, you're looking at basically the exact same screen. It's got the same specs, same brightness, same look, no dynamic island, nothing like that. Um, still a great screen, but basically the same. On the 14 Pro, that's where we start to see some things <laughs> change a little bit. I mean, we talked about this just a little bit already. The dynamic island, it's its like the mother notch. Or the, the daughter notch, I guess, the notch island. <laughs> look at how much bigger it is. It sticks out like, noticeably more. But they have some features around it, they swear, they swear. There's definitely some cool features now. On the Pro model, you're getting a brighter screen this time, despite being the same size and a new weird notch. So in HDR, you're actually gonna get up to 1600 nits versus 1200 on the 13s and the non-Pro. And then outdoors, supposedly the screen can hit 2000 nits peak brightness. Um, I feel like the iPhone 13s were pretty good outside, but um, more brightness outside is never a problem. The refresh rate is also following suit from the 13, so the non-Pro isn't gonna have a high refresh rate screen, but the Pros do, and the new screen on the Pro can actually ramp down to one hert. One hertz? One singular hert. Much pain. Um, that means you're basically only displaying one frame per second on the display, which can help battery and also has enabled Apple to have an always on display. You'll notice that despite you know me touching it a bit, this screen hasn't shut off. It's just, it's just chilling. It's gonna dim down a bit, but you'll still be able to read things like notifications or the time or... I will say that always on displays have definitely been a thing for like six or seven years. I think it was the Galaxy S7. I mean, I'm glad you're here. You're, you're at the party finally, Apple. It's just a little weird that uh, this hasn't happened before. <laughs> On the sides, the look is basically the same. On the pros, you're gonna get their surgical grade stainless steel, which um, I guess that means you can take your iPhone to an operating room. Um, and then on the non-pros, it's going to be aerospace grade aluminum. <laughs> I shit you not, that's what it says on their website. I figure Apple was kind of above that kind of malarkey, but um, no, no, they're definitely not. Yeah, wow, the non-pro does feel kind of crappy. Comparatively, you got like the nice smooth stainless steel on the pro models. This kind of feels kind of feels cheap. It's like brushed. Like I mentioned before, in the US, iPhones aren't gonna come with SIM card slots anymore. And that's because you can't put a SIM card in it. 
Um, it's pretty cool. I will say SIM cards are really stupid uh, and very archaic. They should have died a long time ago. So kind of props to Apple for, for pushing the industry to make this change. Um, I do want my headphone jack back still. There has been controversy because many of the US carriers, the kind of small ones, uh, aren't really ready for this change yet. Now I will say because Apple is doing this with iPhones, chances are the industry is going to change very quickly. Um, I would suspect that next year in Canada even, we probably won't have SIM cards on our iPhones, but who knows. On the outside, it looks pretty much the same. You got three shooters still. There's gonna be a telephoto, an ultra wide, and a main wide shooter. The big difference is the wide shooter is now a 48 megapixel sensor. Now by default, if you take a photo with these new phones, you're not gonna end up with a 48 megapixel file on your phone. If you were shooting like that all the time, I think those photos are somewhere between 60 to 100 megabytes, which is kind of crazy. You'd run out of storage very fast, although Apple might like that to sell you more iCloud subscriptions, I'm sure. Now, supposedly they're gonna use these extra pixels to help with low light, although from my understanding, usually you want- opposite. You want the opposite. You want less pixels that are bigger so they can absorb more light, but uh, that's kind of how it's going to function, I guess. Apple says they're gonna use four pixels and merge them together into like one mother pixel to help with dynamic range and low light. Um, I'm not sure if the sensor is actually bigger. It probably is. Um, so maybe it will work. There's also some new software stuff there, what they're calling their photonic engine, which is just fancy, fancy Apple. David camera guy over here is just like, God damn it. It's just fancy Apple speak for, we take lots of photos at the same time to improve dynamic range. It's like what they used to call like HDR photos. Usually when Apple says stuff about their camera being better in XYZ, it usually is better. I don't know if it's actually that much better, um, but new camera tech is always cool. And Apple definitely does a good job of making their phones take good photos and take good videos. So let's just take them at their word for a bit here. There's also a new and improved image stabilization and an action mode on the 14s. It very much seems like software wizardry. So I would like to see it on the 13s because the non-pro doesn't have improved optical image stabilization like the pro does. Um, so I don't see any reason why the 13s couldn't do action mode other than software locking features to sell new phones, which, you know, to each their own, I guess. That's pretty much all the changes on the outside. So let's take a look at the software now. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Dbrand and their grip cases. I was just saying, this is, this is sponsored, but my unsponsored opinion, these buttons feel really good. <laughs> this might even be part of the talking points. It's part of the talking points. Dbrand says they're chaotic but they do make good stuff like this grip case. It's got really clicky buttons, a super grippy texture, and it can be customized with any of Dbrand's skin, like this new palettes collection that Dbrand released just for iPhones. That with it. Um, I definitely would want a skin here, which I guess you can get, but uh, we weren't insightful enough to put those on. So check them out at the link in the description down below. Turn that shit on. Oh, it's not set up. Damn it. Dang it. While this is setting up, I realized I didn't really talk about the internals. Now on the non-pro, you're getting supposedly the same A15 Bionic processor. On the pro model, you're getting the A16 Bionic, but based on how little they talked about it in the keynote, I suspect there is not very much different. Geekbench scores are a little bit better on the 14s. No surprises there. Let's try the GPU test. Let's look here. Interestingly, a lot better on the 13 Pro Max than on the 14 non-pro. It's probably a size thing and it's hot and just ran a CPU test, but um, the Pro 14 is faster. Flagship phones are kind of silly because they perform so bloody well. It's insane to think that you have the amount of processing power you get on these phones in your pocket. So that's probably why they're starting to talk about it less. It's so good that, you know, it's 10% better. Like who cares? It's already way more than anybody needs to be carrying around every day. In terms of battery life, supposedly the 14s are one hour better than the 13s across the board. There has been a lot of anecdotal evidence online that the 14s and iOS 16 specifically are not very good for battery life. That's usually pretty normal for a new Apple operating system. Give it a couple months and I'm sure they'll figure it out. I will note that on the Pro Max, the battery is actually technically smaller from the 13, although on every other model, it's a little bit bigger. So that probably is helping. Oh God, I forgot to mention, they don't have Wi-Fi 6E. If you're like me and you're a, you're a little bit of a networking nerd and you wanted to see those six gigahertz networks, those six gigahertz speeds, too bad. All of these phones are running iOS 16, so of course they look the same. Uh, 
No surprises there, but I am curious about this dynamic island feature. I don't know how to use it or interact with it. Oh, there's a little like, oh, let me screen record actually, hold on. The screen recording little icon is actually part of that center bar. It got a little bit bigger. Now, what if I like interact with it? Oh, look at that, screen recording. That's kind of cute. We're on a FaceTime call here. I just want to demo what this dynamic island looks like for FaceTime. You can see the subtle differences without the dynamic island on the 13. It's kind of just over the clock. Whereas on this phone, you can see there's, there's the recording icon there and then there's the call icon. If I click on this, it expands. Um, I just, there's no way to do that on this phone. Do I have to swipe down? I, I don't know. This could totally also just work on this 13, you know. I don't know if this is really that cool. Uh, apparently Apple Maps, you can get a good one here. Let's see, navigate, drive. You can see there's a little indicator there that we are navigating. If I click on it, that just brings up the whole map. Okay, can I like drag it out to not open the whole map? I don't know if there's a way to make it do this other than following the directions, but I think when you get close to a corner, it'll expand over whatever you have on the screen if you don't have the full map already and say, hey, you need to turn right in 100 meters or whatever. Uh, you can show a timer. It'll give you low battery alerts. You can access your music controls. So there's a little album art there. You can't really see it because the album art for this song is, is mostly black. How do I, do I have to hold on it? Oh, look at that. Okay, there we go. That's kind of cute. So if I hold on the screen recording, tells me I'm screen recording. If I hold on the music, it shows me the music. Okay, well, let's try that with maps one more time then. All right, so the music moved over here. It has lowered the priority of our screen recording, so we can't see that anymore. If I hold on the map, ah, there we go. Proceed to the route. I feel like this is just Apple trying to find a cute way to make up for the fact that they can't have hidden cameras on the front yet. They have to have a notch or a hole punch of some sort, so this is kind of a cool play on it. Um, I don't know why they don't just have the same feature set on these other phones. It could just drop down from the top like their existing things like control center. Um, and I feel like this is just gonna die by next generation. This gonna be like another 3D touch. Nobody really cared that much despite it being kind of cool and it just, it just dies. I actually forgot to mention something. The front cameras on these new phones now have autofocus. Oh yeah, oh look at that, it's not you have to click to re, wait, it's not refocusing. Is that just the minimum focal distance though? What? There's no way iPhones didn't do this before. It's totally not like refocusing on my face, David. Even clicking it is not doing it. What the f I had no idea. Yeah, it's focused on my nose. I can see all my pores on the new phone. Can't really see them on the old phone. Cool. I don't, I don't know why this wasn't a feature a long time ago. Maybe it's hard to do this. Cool. <laughs> Let's take some selfies. Yeah, I feel like you can see individual hairs of the neck beard a little bit more, more defined. It does look like there's a bit more detail. Like this just looks like one congealed blob. You can actually see the individual fabric. But it just seems like more contrasty. Yeah, is it though? I mean, both photos look really good. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think David's right. It's like mostly mostly just the contrast. This is the ultra wide camera. They look, this looks like there's way more going on. I mean, look at his little, you can see the 3D printer lines on this one. Holy crap, that's quite a bit better. And then look, this is the telephoto. Wow, look at the detail. Holy crap. That's been a major gripe the last few years with all these phones having multiple sensors is the other sensors are usually a lot worse it seems like Apple has done some, some done some work here. <laughs> That's pretty damn good. <laughs> Holy crap, look at that. Wow. Don't get me wrong, 13 camera, still really good. 14 camera? Should we try a low light thing? Sure. This is the telephoto in a really dark scene. Uh, yeah, wow, look at that. That's a lot more detail. This is one of those photos where you have to hold it for a few seconds. Um, so it's technically possible I wasn't as sturdy when I was holding this, but I was really trying to keep it still. And that's on a telephoto too. That might even be as good as the main shooter on this phone. Like there's the main shooter, here's the telephoto. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, it did take a couple kind of dark. 
Um, sometimes it doesn't really like get into that, I'm taking a, a couple second exposure mode um, and takes dark photos, but that's the case with the old iPhones too. But let's try, there's the ultra wide. Yeah, again, just looks a little bit more detail, a little bit less grain. The contrast, honestly, pretty similar. I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but the dynamic range is like, it's pretty, pretty similar. Overall, the detail and lower light on the other shooters, not the main one, pretty good. It's definitely improved. So Apple, you've, you've done your work. We should check out action mode. Apple says this is supposed to be just like st image stabilization on crack. Do a light jog down the street. Do a light. Like... I mean, I'm sprinting now. <laughs> So you got a little bit of a shaky hand here. Not bad. It's definitely cropped more <laughs> on, the, on the action mode one. It's quite a bit more cropped. Wow, look at the difference. Wow, that's huge. Like I, this is when I was lightly jogging. You almost can't even tell. It does have a bit of that weird, I'm being stabilized kind of vibe to it. But the amount of crop is crazy. It's quite a bit more cropped for sure. Yeah. Now this is 2.8K on this phone, 4K on this phone because mm -hmm. Uh, the action mode limits you. Um, that's probably part of it. So if you got crazy kids and you're trying to film them or you're chasing after your friend and trying to film it, this will work pretty well. What? It Not sounds better, better on the non-pro. Yeah. And the 13 Pro Max. I think it sounds the best. It does have a size advantage, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but of these two phones, in Crab Rave specifically, the non-pro sounds better. Considering the size, modern smartphones, especially Apple devices, sound really good. But uh, yeah, if you really care about audio, maybe the non-pro is the better bet. I realize we forgot to talk about pricing. So the 14 is gonna set you back 799 for the 128. The 14 Pro is going to be 999 for 128, so that's a thousand bucks. If you upgrade to the bigger models of either, so that's gonna be the Plus on the non-pro or the Pro Max on the Pro, it's an extra hundred bucks over the smaller size, and that's all gonna be for 128 gig phones. Overall, given my first impressions here, I'm gonna say that if you're on an iPhone 13, the 14, Ugh, not really a compelling upgrade, especially considering the price. Maybe if you can sell your 13 for, for good value and you didn't buy Apple Care on it or anything like that, you can maybe squeak this out. If you're on an older iPhone, the camera's really good, really cool phone, maybe it's worth it then. But on the other hand, if you're on an older iPhone, the 13s are gonna be coming down in price. These could be a really, really good buy, especially considering how similar they are. And I imagine a couple of these features like the dynamic island will come and trickle down into the other models in a similar form, or it's just gonna die off as a, a one version wonder. That's all I've got for you today. If you guys like this video, maybe check out the Galaxy Watch unboxing I did, that was pretty fun. Maybe that would be enough to get you to switch. I will say the Galaxy Watch battery life, a lot better than Apple Watch. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, get subscribed, and maybe leave a comment telling me about your thoughts on the iPhone 14. Because, I mean, it's cool, it's just really expensive, and, and pretty much the same thing as before.